let's begin. So we we'll begin breathing in verse uh, 13, Luke 12, 13. He said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who will be a judge or an arbitrator over you? And he said to them, and he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possess. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, A crown of a, of a certain rich man yielded plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then, though, then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself, and is not rich. So may the Lord bless the reading of his word. Now, the context of the verses we read is a response to a man in the crowd that have asked the Lord to intervene uh, in his financial problem with his brother. Uh, so the man was actually not interested in understanding the ministry of Christ, but he wants the Lord, maybe out of respect, to intervene in his problem with his brother with regards to his inheritance. But the ministry of Jesus Christ is not focused on any material things. The ministry of Christ is focused on spiritual things. But sometimes people that listen to him has a different idea and uh, different agenda with regards to their following of Jesus. You know, they do not follow him and listen to him because they are really interested. But more so because they want this influential rabbi uh you know to intervene on their behalf or what they can get out from him uh that will benefit them materially and financially so the man we don't read the bible did not say the case that he has with his brother but he was just asking the lord can you please in intervene it's almost like he was telling the lord or commanding the lord to uh uh you know be a judge and arbiter on the matter with his brother financially uh, because uh maybe he was afraid to approach a a judge or what have you you know the bible did not say that uh but the lord answered him and said who made me a judge or an arbiter or an arbiter over you, meaning uh, what power or what uh, authority do I have? Because Jesus legally does not have and possess the authority. You know, he, uh, only the recognized judge in that hour can lawfully dispense or intervene or mediate in such matters uh, such as inheritance and the division thereof, you know, and therefore the Lord asked him, who made me a judge, meaning what authority do I possess? Because legally he doesn't possess any, you know, or an arbitrator over you. So the Lord 
uh, you know, politely rejected that idea of him intervening uh, in the issue uh, with regards to the pleadings and the request of this man. You know, he is one of the listeners uh, in the crowd and abruptly or out of the blue, he was asking the Lord to intervene. And then because of this uh, situation, uh, the Lord gave a parable but warn with regards to covetousness, you know. Uh, in verse 15, it says here, And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Now, the Lord is not saying that having financial blessing in your life is bad. Covetousness is discontent. You are actually not contented with what you possess. And you are obsessed uh, of having more. Nothing suffice. There is no satisfaction whatsoever. That is the meaning of covetousness. Nothing satisfies. You are not contented with what you have. All right? And, and that is the warning that the Lord is trying to imply in giving out this parable and he uses a situation a metaphorical situation of a man that is very wealthy but careless about spiritual things and that is actually uh, in reference to this man asking the lord to intervene in his financial problem with his brother he was with the crowd he was among the crowd heard jesus preach but the message of Jesus did not sink in. Okay, so he is more interested on the material side and what he can get out from the Lord. So the Lord gave this parable in verse 16. Brothers and sisters, uh, he said, there is a rich man. The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. Okay. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So, the Lord is saying, This man has so much, more than enough for himself. And he was asking a question, What am I going to do with my excess? Alright? In the Jewish tradition, in the Jewish law, in the law of Moses, if you have more than enough, if you have sufficiency, you are not only to think about your own benefit. All right? You have to think about the fatherless, the poor, the homeless. Okay? So, uh, there is a teaching or there are teachings in the law of Moses with regards to helping the underprivileged. All right? So, but this man uh, in this parable is not thinking about sharing what he possesses. He has no thought about being a blessing to others. You know, the only thing he thinks about is where is he going to store his abundance? His surplus. Okay? His surplus. Because it's more than enough. All right? He's more than enough. And then uh, the first thing that came into his mind is to enlarge his storage room. You know, the capacity probably of his storage room is not enough to accommodate the surplus of his harvest. And therefore, the first thing he, 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 he you know, that came into his mind is he will tear down uh, the present storehouse or storage he has and he will enlarge it to accommodate, you know, uh, the abundance of his harvest. And he says here, and he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods. No, Now, look at the attitude of this man. He has so much abundance. He doesn't think about giving for the poor. He doesn't think about helping the underprivileged. He doesn't even think about giving for the Lord. 
Nothing. Nothing of those sorts. Alright? Okay, he doesn't think about, because in the Bible it says, you honor the Lord with the first fruits of your harvest. That is in the book of Proverbs. Okay, but this man did not think about that. Alright? So what he uh, came up with is an idea enlarging his storage room so that he will be able to accommodate and house his abundant harvest. And that is actually covetousness. Mm -hmm. When a man only thinks about what is good for himself, what is good for him, that is covetousness. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. And the Bible warned about covetousness. Mm -hmm. All right. Now let us uh, let us read in Ecclesiastes chapter five, verse ten. Ecclesiastes chapter five, verse ten. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. Right. This too is meaningless. There has never been a man wealthier than Solomon. And Solomon realized the futility and the vanity of wealth if it is not used properly or meaningfully. All right? And uh, we can read in Philippians chapter 4, Verse 11 to 13. What did Paul say in that verse? Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned. Dami mga pasok na bago na late. For I learned. In whatever state I am to be content, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry and both to abound and to suffer need. So I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So Paul is saying, it, it, it doesn't matter what situation I am with. He learned to be content. And that is one thing that uh, many Christians even struggle. You know, contentment is a hard discipline. Okay? Contentment is hard to, to practice. It is hard to, to realize. It is hard to live in a life of contentment. But the question that we need to ask is are you ever content with what you have that's the first question do you feel like you always have to get more that's the second question is the pursuit of things consuming you huh that's the reason why we become consumers from the word consume to power, to have more okay having no contentment and no satisfaction at all brothers and sisters hallelujah so, uh, lessons that we can learn from, from uh, this rich fool, brothers and sisters, is that according to Paul, those that desire to be rich will only invite sorrows in their life. You know, people think that wealthy people doesn't have any problem. You know, the, 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 the wealthier you become, the more insecure you become. Because you think about that the reason why people want to be your friend is because they want to get something from you. You become suspicious of people. You know, it's hard for you to trust. Because sometimes you think that people that want to get close to you is because, and the reason uh, is because you have so much money. And then you have to hire bodyguards because you are a wealthy individual. Mm -hmm. And you need to look over your shoulder because you probably are afraid of being kidnapped or something. Mm -hmm. You know? So that's the issue about rich, rich people. 
And now with this case of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard in the United States, you know, suing $50 million and this and that, you know, it's all about money, mm. brothers and sisters. So there is no satisfaction at all. And, and wealthy people are more insecure than people that are poor. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. do I say it's bad to be wealthy? No, because we will have a dichotomy of problem. Dichotomy means two or, you know, dual. It is not good to be so poor that you will hate God. It is also not good to be too rich that it will take you away from God. Because that was the prayer of David. Don't make me too wealthy that I may forget you. Don't make me too poor that I may hate you. So give me whatever it is that I need. Now, in the event that the Lord made you prosperous, just for example, let us look at the balance. In the event that the Lord made you prosperous, for example, the Lord entrusts wealth into you because not all are given the privilege. Not many. All right? Because not many can really handle it. All right? So people think that it's easy to have so much abundance, but really not people, not a lot of people can biblically handle their wealth. I mean biblically. I'm not talking about in the natural. I am talking about biblically because this man, the rich fool, is the attitude of the, of the world. Okay? The attitude of the world. That's not the attitude of a Bible-believing Christian. Okay? What you see in the parable of the rich fool is the attitude of worldly people who doesn't believe in the scripture and people who doesn't follow the discipline of God. Mm. All right? Now, what did the Lord say about abundance? Okay? Paul says that if the Lord blesses you so much, let's go back to... First Timothy. Let us read in First Timothy chapter six, verse seventeen. Up to nineteen. Command those who are rich in this present age. Now, this letter of Paul to Timothy telling him to command the wealthy. He is not talking about wealthy unbelievers, but wealthy believers, the rich believers, okay? The believers or the brethren that are wealthy materially. And Paul is telling Timothy, you tell this to them, okay? That they are not to be haughty. Wag maging mayabang. Alright? Because you can be haughty. No? People... Coming from rags to riches, if they're careful, if they're not careful, they will become haughty. They will become high-minded. It will change their character. Right? We're not supposed to be that. Nor to trust in uncertain riches. Meaning, if you become wealthy, your reliance, your confidence, and your trust should not lean on the material things. Okay? You're not supposed to lean on or put your trust, okay, in material things. But in the living God who gives us rich, richly all things to enjoy. Verse 18, let them do good, okay? Meaning, if you are wealthy, you, ha you are in the position to, to help other people. Okay, uh, the the poor they are, they don't have the capability and the means to help. But if the Lord prospers you, you are now being set, okay, in the position of helping others. Let them do good that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, and willing to share. All right, but that was not. The thinking of the rich fool when he had so much harvest and his storage was not enough to accommodate the abundant harvest that he had. The first thing that came into his mind is 
he will tear down his barn and enlarge it. So he was not thinking about helping. He was not thinking about distributing. He was not thinking about the poor. He was not thinking about the the uh, the fatherless, the motherless, the homeless. He was not thinking about those people. Okay? Hallelujah. But biblical Christian, all is telling is if in the event, life, God blesses you in this present life, that you're supposed to be what? Rich in good works, ready to give, and willing to share. Yeah. You're not supposed to be stingy or maramot. Okay? No Christian is supposed to be stingy. Okay? If you are a stingy person before you became a Christian, the moment you became a Christian, part of our growth is how to be a generous individual. How can we be a help? I remember yung kwentuhan namin ni Sister Dolly. You know, his, her grandson Joshua is already think at a very young age, is already thinking about saving so he can help the underprivileged. Imagine that. That is a good desire. You know, at a very young age, he's, he's already thinking about not only thinking for himself. He was already thinking about how he can help young boys that are underprivileged. That's why he is saving money. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters. And verse 19, look at the rewards. If, if, if we will be a generous, willing to share individual, storing up for themselves a good for a good foundation for the time to come which is the afterlife that they may lay hold on eternal life all right meaning what you're doing in the natural okay what you're doing in the in the present life because why did we become a christian in the first place hallelujah we became a christian in the first place to live the scripture, not only to enjoy salvation and to receive something from the Lord, but we can be a tool in the in, in the in, in the hands of the Lord to be a blessing to others. Okay, first is to share salvation uh, coming from the Word of God, and if the Lord blesses me more than I need, then I can be a blessing to others mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. All right, now if you can read with me in in. In First uh, John, uh, let's go to First John chapter three. Let us begin reading in verse seventeen. But whoever has this world's goods, all right, and sees his brother in need. And shuts his heart from him. How does the love of God abide in him? See, even John is questioning. If you see your brother in need, and you have so much, and you shut your generosity, your door, you shut your door so you can help that person, then John is questioning, how does the love of God abide in him? See? Because... Christianity in the first place is not actually taking, it's giving. Mm -hmm. You know, in John 3.16, if you remove the word give, in John 3.16, that verse is meaningless. Mm -hmm. That verse has, has no power if you remove that one word give. For God so loved the world that he give his only begotten son so God proving his love to us by giving his son mm -hmm. see that's the reason why it says you know there is a saying that says you can you can give with you can you can give without loving mm -hmm. but you cannot love without giving see mm -hmm. you can give without loving but you cannot love without giving see so Paul uh, and Paul and John has the same uh, uh, the same principle. All right? He said, "My little children, 
My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue. So don't just say you love that person without doing anything. Okay? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed, in works, and in truth. So your, your confession about you love, you love, you love, and you're not doing anything, uh, that, that's not actually love. It's just a lip service. And that's the problem with this rich fool. He was not thinking about helping. Actually, in, this, in, 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 in Israel, when you harvest, you are not supposed to harvest everything. Mm -hmm. You're only supposed to harvest, brothers and sisters, some parts of your field. But there are parts of your field that you're not supposed to harvest because you leave that part to the homeless, to the fatherless, to the lepers. Especially to the lepers that are outcasts in the society. They cannot enter the city to receive any help. And therefore, if you own a big parcel of land, you're not supposed to, to really harvest everything to, you know, to a point that there's nothing left. You leave out something so that those that doesn't have the ability, brothers and sisters, to work like uh, people, the people that are lame, the lepers, the outcasts, you know, they, when, when people are already out in the field and they go back home, then there is something for them, you know, to eat. That is the law. And, and we have here a setting in, 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 uh, in Luke because during the ministry of Christ, they are still under the law. And this rich fool is not thinking about that. He has no concern whatsoever. You know, he has no love. He has no compassion. This is a selfish, self-centered, rich individual who doesn't care about anything other than himself. Brothers and sisters. And so let's go back. Hallelujah. Let's go back to uh, the Gospel of St. Luke. So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns. He already has a barn, but that barn needs to be enlarged because he has so much harvest. Okay? And I will I will I will pull down my barns and build greater, meaning bigger. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. Right? And this is the most disastrous part of the story of the parable and i will say to my soul this is the bad thing soul you have many goods laid up for many years take your ease eat drink and be merry where is god in the picture god is nowhere to be found in the heart of this rich fool See, he thinks that he has the power to determine his future. And he thinks that having so much abundance, okay, will be enough for him that will provide for his needs for many, many, many years. And therefore, all he needs to do is enjoy life. <laughs> enjoy life. Let's drink. And be merry, and tomorrow we die. All right. But remember now, in the setting of this parable, Jews are not supposed to live like that. Okay? The Jewish people are told by God, okay, when they enter the promised land, do not think that the reason why you have abundance is because of your own strength. The Lord said, lest when you enter into the land. Let's read that, brothers and sisters. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Now, I want you to remember that this rich fool in this parable, in the context of the parable, is presumed to know the law of Moses. Because this is not addressed to us. 
Because the ministry of Christ, when he was here on earth, is centered on the Jewish people. So let us presume and assume, okay, like the one who asked the Lord, intervene in my material or financial issue with my brother, okay? That is a Jew, all right? And we have to presume and assume as well that the character in the parable, the rich fool, is also a Jew. Someone that is not, that someone that has a knowledge in the law of Moses. Someone that is not ignorant about the law of giving. Okay? Now, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Let us read a beginning in verse 10. So that we will uh, have the full context. Let's begin reading in verse 10. Deuteronomy 8 verse 10. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgment, his statutes which I command you this day. Lest when you have eaten and are full, and a build beautiful houses and dwell in them. When your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted up and you forget, mm -hmm. listen to this, and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, which is normally the case when a person is abundantly blessed. He tends to forget who it was who blessed him. That's why I said, you know, I have experienced this in our church. When someone doesn't have work, he will ask, Pastor, can you please pray for my, pray that I will have a work and work when it is given. When all of his prayers have been answered, when the Lord bless him materially, oh you cannot God. find that person in the church anymore. Wealth took over. And that is exactly what the Lord warned Israel not to do. Because they may forget. Abundance will tend make you forget the source of your blessing. All right? And that is, brothers and sisters, natural uh, in the hearts of people. Mm. You know, it naturally happens to people, even Christians, most especially. Mm. Hallelujah. So the Lord is warning Israel. Okay? In verse 14, when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And that is exactly what happened to that rich fool. Yeah. He did not even honor God yeah. with his abundance. He did not even honor God with his harvest. He did not even honor God by giving to the, to the underprivileged. He was not thinking about anything other than himself. And that was the warning that God gave to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. All right? You forget. Yeah. People forget, brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah. Who led you through the great and terrible wilderness mm -hmm. in which were fiery serpents, mm -hmm. and scorpions, and thirsty lamb, mm -hmm. where there was no water, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you to do you good in the end. Mm -hmm. Then you say in your heart, this is the bad thing. Then you say in your heart, my power, see, mm -hmm. my power and the might of my hand have gained me this well. That is the failure, brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. you know. Now, Israel is claiming that it was through their power that made them wealthy. And mm -hmm. that probably was the thinking of this rich fool. Mm -hmm. 
It was not God. I was a hard-working man. You know, I did it all by myself. Like Frank Sinatra song. I did it my way. See? God was not even in the picture. And the Lord said, War, be, be, be warned. Because in the end, you might say, it is my own might, it is my own strength that made me wealthy. Because they have forgotten who really, you know, gave them the wealth that they enjoy. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. Power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. And you shall remember the Lord your God. Why? For it is He, not you, not me. Not I. It is He, God Almighty, who gives you power to get wealth. That He might establish His covenant which He swore to your fathers as it is this day. Who gave the power to gain wealth? He was God. But what happened when wealth comes? Man says, it is I. It is my own strength. It is my hard work that made me what I am today. God is not in the picture anymore. And that is exactly what happened to this rich fool. Because of his abundance, he is telling himself. He is, in, he is telling to himself, you can now rest. You can now be at ease. You can now relax. You have so much money in the bank. No need to worry. Uh, no need to worry. No need to, to think about anything. <laughs> huh? But the Lord is saying in the book of Matthew as well, you cannot boast of tomorrow. You cannot boast of tomorrow for you do not know what tomorrow may bring. All right? Amen. You cannot boast of tomorrow for you know not what tomorrow may bring. So when this rich fool is telling himself, I can now relax. I can now be at ease. I have so much that I can live with for so many years. I can just enjoy life. Now, does the Bible forbid you to enjoy life? No. Does the Bible forbid you to enjoy the labors of your hand? No. Does the Bible forbid you to gain wealth? No. No. But what the Bible forbids, brothers and sisters, is when we forget where wealth comes from. It is when we become ungrateful and we allow wealth to dominate our heart and we become obsessed with it and we become covetous, mm -hmm. and God is not in the picture anymore. Sunday, you are somewhere instead of you being in church because now you have the means to travel. You have the means to enjoy. You have the means to go here. You have the means to go there. And you have forgotten your covenant with the Lord. That's the bad part. Hallelujah. But when you don't have all of these things, you are always in church. But when the Lord prospers you, you cannot be found in the church anymore. And that's the bad thing. Okay, God is not part of anything you possess. He is out of the picture anymore. Hallelujah. You just want to enjoy whatever it is that you have. Brothers and sisters. And that is exactly the problem of this rich fool. He was telling himself, Hallelujah, relax. All right? And that is also the picture of wealthy people in the world. Those that are wealthy in the world who thinks that they can buy their way to heaven. You cannot. You cannot buy your way to heaven. I don't care if you are the wealthiest man in the world. You cannot bribe and pay your way to heaven. Because the Bible says, we are saved not by silver or gold, but by the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Kung sa Tagalog pa, you know, ang tao nung walang-wala, humble. Pero nung yumaman, hindi na humble, humble na. 
Exactly. Hindi naman lahat. Exactly. Pero it happens. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. That's why I always remind the church, be careful. Watch mm-hmm. your heart. The moment mm-hmm. you get wealthy and rich, mm-hmm. watch your heart. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Watch your heart. You have to know where God is in your life. Mm-hmm. Is he number one, number two, number three? Where is God? Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. The See? Because what material thing does, it gives you an ability of power. You know, an amount of power, the ability of purchase, the ability to do things which you cannot when you have nothing. Now you, you, you know, you are overwhelmed with so much and you don't know what to do with it. And that is exactly what happened to this rich fool. He was not thinking about anything other than enlarging his barn. I need to enlarge my barn. See? God is not even in the picture. He's not saying, oh, the Lord bless me. I need to bring the first fruits of my offering to God. I will honor first the Almighty. That was not even there. See? It wasn't even there. And the Lord, when you're blessed, God is not in the picture. When you're blessed, oh, bay, may pan-shopping na ako, may pambili ako ng ganito, may pambili ako ng ganon, may pambili ako ng ganito. Ah, sige, hataw. God is not in the picture. See? God is not in the picture. Or, tutulungan ko yung, yung tao na ito na walang-wala. Ganito, mag, kahit magbigay ako ng kaunti sa taong walang-wala. That was not even our mind. Or, ibili ko ng ganito ang gamit sa church. Di ba? Or what? I wanna help. How many Christians are thinking about that? The, when they're blessed, they're thinking about honoring the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, how many are like that today? All right? How many? Okay? And the problem with this rich fool, he was not thinking about God. He is only thinking about himself. You can now relax. You can now enjoy life. Be at peace. Because you have so much to live with for the rest of your life. And then God enters the picture. All right, let's read. Mm-hmm. Luke chapter 12. This this morning, but the Lord changed my my message. <laughs> so kayo ang nauna. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Luke chapter 12. Let's begin reading in verse 19 first. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take is, eat, drink, and be merry. So he was telling it to himself. And then God entered the picture. <laughs> but God said to him, Fool! The Tagalog, mang mang! This night! Wow! This night! Your soul will be required of you. My God! That night he will die. So what will happen to all of the things that he stored? He will not even enjoy it. Because that night, the Lord says, I will take you home. This night, this very night, you're going home. That's why the Lord is reminding people, don't boast of tomorrow. How many of us here can can, can say, Tomorrow I'll wake up. No, nobody. You know, nobody. Nobody can predict what will happen. What will be? What will be the outcome of tomorrow? So every day we live, we have to be thankful to God. Amen. Amen. You know, we have to be thankful to God that we wake up in the morning and we're still healthy, we're still eating. We have to be thankful to the Almighty God. But the problem with people, they think that they're God. Mm-hmm. They think that they can boast of what tomorrow may bring. They, they think that because they have so much, you know, that is their security. Our security is not in material things. Our security is in God alone. Mm-hmm. Because when we die, God doesn't care whether you're the wealthiest individual. He doesn't care. God is never going to be impressed 
with your material achievement. All right? That's it. You, how can you? How can you? How can people even boast to God when God is the Creator of heaven and earth? <laughs> Paano mo yayabangan ng Diyos na siya nga may-ari ng langit at ang lupa? Mm -hmm. You know? And therefore, the Bible is always teaching us to stay humble. Mm -hmm. Let not wealth change our heart. Mm -hmm. Okay? Don't let it change your character and your being. Mm -hmm. Kaya nag-post ako sa Facebook. Sabi ko, hindi lang ang kahirapan ng pagsubok, kahit ang kayamanan pagsubok din yan. Mm -hmm. Dahil pwedeng baguhin niya ng ugali mo. Ha? Pwede. Mas madaling ang magbago yung galing sa mahirap na umaman. Eh. Pwede. Madaling magbago. Madali mga kapatid. I have seen that in my life. You know, I mean in the years that I have been a minister, I have seen it. You know, people can say words, people can promise this, people can promise that. But the moment they receive something, they're gone. Not all, but that's just the thing. That's why be careful. Be careful with what you ask. Before you even ask for promotion, check your heart. Are you ready for the blessings of God? Yeah. All right? Are you ready for the blessings of God? Will it not change you? Will it not change you? Will he still be the number one priority in your life? Amen. That's the question. Or do you only remember God when you have nothing? And then when you when your when your prayers are answered, you're gone. You, you tend to forget God. So God becomes a genie. God becomes a jukebox. God becomes a waiter to serve what we need. Instead of you know whatever it is that is given to us in this life, we all use it for the glory of God. And how we can be a blessing to other people. Mm. Brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Mm. Because your Christianity will mean nothing. If they don't see anything in your life. Brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Alright. And so this rich fool. Thinks. That his life will be. Length, uh, you know for a long period of time. He will live that long. Only to be disappointed. When God enters the picture saying, you're a fool, mm -hmm. tonight, your soul will be required of you. Mm -hmm. See? Your soul will be required of you. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. So the Bible says, for God said to him, fool, this night your, your soul will be required of you. Then, though, then whose will those things be which you are provided. Meaning, who will who will benefit the things that you have stored? Not you. Not you. Mm -hmm. You think it for yourself, but you're going to die tonight, so you're not going to even enjoy it. The Lord said. So for what? Imagine that. I did not say that we're reading it, brothers and sisters. It's in the scripture. See? It's in the scripture. Hallelujah. So, so is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. See? For God, this guy is not wealthy. For God, this guy is the poorest of the poor. And that is exactly what the Laodicean church said to themselves. Let's go back in, let's go to Revelation chapter 3. Christianity is dead in Europe now. You know why? Huh? why? If you if you know we have people here from Switzerland, how many people are going to church Not today? Few. A handful. You have cathedrals in Europe. Yes, indeed. But only a handful will go there. Not only a few will go there. But that was not the situation of Europe. Ah, during the time of Martin Luther. No, 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 no. When Europe was not an affluent continent, okay, when Europe was besieged with wars, with famine, with problems and chaos, people go to church. Yeah. People go to church. 
But the moment it became wealthy, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters, people go to church during baptism, during Christmas, during wedding, but not on a regular Sunday. Yes, No. In America, my God, only a handful. You know how many goes to church at Brother Tim's church? Mm -hmm. Only a handful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but in America, there's almost church in every 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 two miles or every mile. You can always see church in every corner. But how many people are going there? A handful. How many people will go to parties, basketball games? Sports, multitudes. So there is a new religion, sports, beauty contests. See? Beauty contests. Uh, singing contests. Entertainment. That's the new religion today. Church? No more. That's not, that we are becoming extinct, irrelevant, outdated. You know? That's the thing today, brothers and sisters. The church has become outdated. Why do you see there's so much mass shooting in America today? Because it's decaying morally. It's going down. Imagine in, in, in a matter of two to three weeks, how many mass shootings in the States? Four, I think. Three to four mass shootings in the States. Brothers and sisters. And what's the meaning of that? Uh, it's a moral decay. I remember Brother Banam said when he was alive, America, prepare for judgment because you have rejected God. Yeah, like Israel. Uh. Hmm? See? Okay. Hallelujah. So it's a normal occurrence among people when they have become wealthy. I'm not saying this as a sweeping statement. I'm happy that people are blessed. I'll be more than happy to see you blessed. But let me warn you that blessing should not take the position of God in your life. Mm -hmm. Or material wealth should not take the position of God in your heart. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. So let's go to Revelation chapter 3. Yes, because we're living in the Laodicean church. The Laodicean church age is the materialistic church age. Hallelujah. That's the reason why it's a lukewarm church. What made it lukewarm? Wealth mm -hmm. made it lukewarm. Mm -hmm. So let's go to Revelation 3. Let's read beginning in verse 14. And to the angel of the church of the Laodicean write, This thing says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Mm -hmm. I know your works. That you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold nor hot. So then because you are lukewarm. And neither cold nor hot. What is the meaning of lukewarm? You know. Afraid to take sides. Lukewarm is someone that doesn't take sides. It's neither cold nor hot, meaning walang stand. You know, parang kawayan yan. Easily swayed. Alright? So what made this church a lukewarm church? Verse 17. Because you say, I am rich and have need of nothing. I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. I don't need God. I don't need church. I don't need this. I don't need God. I don't need all of these religious things. I have so much. See? Is that not the same thing that the rich full have said? Mm. Huh? <laughs> that, is the, that is exactly what he said. Huh? Now that you have sufficiency, relax. Be at ease, enjoy life, have need of nothing. I don't need spiritual things. And you do not know, the Lord said, that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. You think you're wealthy? You're not. You're naked. 
And you, in your eyes and in the eyes of the world, yes. But in the eyes of God, what are you? You are wretched. You are poor. You are miserable. You are blind. And you're naked. See? Brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. So if you go back to the parable of the rich fool, you know, brothers and sisters, in verse 21, it says here, So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. See? He doesn't care about God anymore. He doesn't give importance to spiritual things. Brothers and sisters, without realizing, I hope wealthy people will realize this. And this is my advice to you. This is my advice. If you want to remain blessed, this is my advice to you. Okay? Whatever transactions you have, regardless of whatever it is. Okay? You give that Sunday, this one day, to the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you have friends that invite you out for Sunday, tell them, let me go to church first before we go out. Okay, I can do anything. All right, I can, I can give you my time, but give me this time, you know, that I have to worship my God. That I have to honor Him first. All right? Amen. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that they offer you, whether it's job, and if you have a job, let me give you this sound advice. If you have work, you tell your boss, okay, can I have a, a Sunday off? You have to fight for that. And that is the problem with Christians today. They think that, you know, if my boss will not give me Sunday, then I have to abide by my boss. No. 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 You tell your boss, I have my obligations to my God. Mm -hmm. Let me give you this advice, my sisters, and whoever it is that listens to my voice. If you, if you put God first on top of your priority, He will give you a job that will not contradict and hinder you, you know, from going to church every Sunday. Because I believe that my God will supply. The Bible says that God give wealth and he adds no sorrow. Mm -hmm. So if the blessing is really from the Lord, that will not prevent you from serving him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right? Amen. But if your work prevents you from going to church, if your work prevents you from serving your God even for or even even for that day that you're supposed to take a day off. You have to think twice. You have to ask the Lord, Lord, if this work is not for you, give me another one. Because I don't want this work to hinder me, you know, from serving you. Brothers and sisters. You know. I have a testimony, you know, John's Kitchen, the, the, the restaurant of our brother here, close to our subdivision, they went bankrupt. They own at least 88 8 million pesos many years ago. At that time, Brother John was not yet faithful in coming to church. His wife, Dorcas, was faithful because she was... Uh, you know, she was a young girl when the, the entire family got converted. So when they married, John is, you know, he was not really a regular attendee. So to, to cut the long chase, the business went down. Okay, it was really, it was even a time that John was contemplating of committing suicide. And whenever we visit them, you know, almost nobody eats. Okay, and then we were just talking and sharing. We cry. I cry with them. I was encouraging them and I gave him this advice. I said, John, if the Lord gives you a second chance, make a covenant with the Almighty. You can work from Monday through Saturday. 
But this one day, you give it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. You make a covenant with God. That this day is a day that is non-negotiable. You know, after that meeting, it took another five to six months. His friends hired him. One, one of his friends hired him to be a cook. Okay? And that is where he got the idea of unlimited steak. So he started, he was actually the one. So he started uh, offering unlimited steak. You know what? When he started doing that, my God. From, from then till now, it was like five years ago. You can see a long line of people. Long line of people, you know, waiting to get into his restaurant. Brothers and sisters. And there was a miracle that turned around. Wow. Hallelujah. And they were able to pay their debts. Wow. And actually, John was instrumental in, in, in our church, our former church being renovated. Because he proposed, said, Pastor, I, I'd like to help. I was not even thinking about that. It was him and Judah Ben that was thinking. I said, if that is in your heart, you be the one to say to the church, not me. And he was actually the one. Brothers and sisters, so the Lord blessed them. The Lord prospered them. They were able to pay off some of their debts. I think they only owe oh, very, very little now. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. So, you know, the Lord blessed them in a great way. Why? Because he said, because he put God on top of his priority. Mm -hmm. You know, I always tell this to the, to, 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 to the saints. If God is with you, why, do, why are you afraid to even side with God? You know, if you have a powerful friend, for example, the president is your friend, you take pride of that. You know, there is a there is an amount of security. May padrino ka. Ang presidente, ang mayor, o sino mang mga powerful individual. Sino pang pinakamatinding padrino na gusto ninyo kung hindi ang Diyos? <laughs> I mean, brothers and sisters, there is no greater power that we want to align ourselves with than God. So if, if, if why are we so afraid to really live his word. Let's prove his word. Mm -hmm. If I will abide and submit to the word of God, then God is obligated, you know, to fulfill his promises. Mm -hmm. Because he said it. All I need to do is obey it. Mm -hmm. All I need to do is act on it. Brothers and sisters, if the Lord says I have to love him above, then I need to do that. You know, then what will he do? Brothers and sisters, what, 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 what did he uh, tell Joshua? Meditate on my law, let it not depart from thy mouth. Mm -hmm. Meditate upon it day and night, mm -hmm. that you mayest be able to, uh, to obey and perform everything that is in it, then your way shall be prosperous. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, you know, mm -hmm. hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, and, and, and I can say, our church and our ministry is a living testament. Yes. You know, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. I can testify to you, brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. by our own experience, we just stayed faithful to God, Amen. uncompromising in our stand with regards to the truth. Hallelujah, yes. praise the Lord, and the Lord blessed in His own mighty way. We don't need to beg for people, we don't need to to coerce people to, to help. We don't need to ask any help from anyone. You know, brothers and sisters, the Lord provides. Mm -hmm. That is how he operates, brothers and sisters. Because I believe if I am a servant of God, I don't need to beg. God is obligated to fulfill his word, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. And he had been faithful for more than 10, 35 years that I have served him. I can testify to that. Brothers and sisters, so my challenge to you is, is, I'm not talking of my, I'm using myself as an example. You put God on top of your priority. Mm -hmm. Regardless how tempting it could be, you know, that should not make you afraid. I'll put God first. It's Sunday, yes, my appointment with God. Okay? If you want to go somewhere else, you go. Okay? But I have an appointment with my creator. 
This is the time for my God. All right? I have work and he has blessed me from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And this day is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad on him. Hallelujah. I should never be afraid what people will say. I should never be afraid, brothers and sisters. You know, if I lose anything, I, I am actually not going to lose anything. If I fulfill the word of God, I am gaining more. <laughs> I am gaining more, not losing anything. And I am confident that the God I serve is more than enough to fulfill his word. And that is exactly the problem of this rich fool. He was not thinking about God. He was not thinking about other people. He's only thinking of himself. He's afraid. And he is the most, this rich fool is the most insecure person that you can see in the Bible. Why? Because his security is not in God. Mm -hmm. The time that he can say to himself, soul, relax, be at ease, enjoy, mm -hmm. is when he saw his barns filled with so much stuff. Until then, he was not saying, the, saying that to himself. You know? See? So his reliance, his security is the opposite of what Paul advised Timothy to tell them that are rich. That they should not anchor their tomorrow on uncertain wealth. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. And so if you want to, to live a life confidently, unafraid, brothers and sisters, that's why I said, you know, prices of this will go up. Prices of the, I, I don't care. Because nobody, why will I, if I complain, will it change anything? You know, if the price of oil will go up, if the rent goes up, if the electric bill goes up, I'll say, Lord, provide me more than what, you know, so I can pay my bills. Yes. Is he able to do that? Yes, he yes. is able to yes. do that. Stop yes. complaining and start believing. That is what I'm telling the church. Ang problema sa mga tao, misang parang walang Diyos. Complain, 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 complain. Ay, ganito, ay, ganito, ay, problema kayo. Wala ka bang Diyos? Puro problema na lang ang bukang bibig mo. Di ba? Wala nang sinabi kung hindi problema, problema, hirap, hirap, hirap. Diyos ko po. Parang walang Diyos. Amen? We have a God. We have a God that we can run to. What was my message today? We have the boldness to enter into the veil. We can approach God and ask and present to Him our petition, our request. Brothers and sisters, so we have to live life unafraid. Paul said to Timothy, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Because fear has torment. If you allow fear to overwhelm you, you will have torment. It will steal away the peace in your heart. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. And fear coming from the enemy is his way of robbing you, brothers and sisters, of your confidence and trust in the Almighty God. But where is the confidence of this rich fool? To his wealth. That's the, his problem. But his, his confidence is in his possession. Not in the one who gave him what he possessed. See? Like what Paul said in Romans, they honor the creation more than the creator. <laughs> we value things more than the one who gave it. Brothers and sisters, see, our love is in material things, which is not supposed to be the case, brothers and sisters. So let us not live in the pattern like this rich fool. He is rich, no doubt about it, but he's a fool. <laughs> I do not want to be rich and a fool. I want to be rich and wise, brothers and sisters. And there's only one way to be that. And 
Brothers and sisters, the secret is submit to God. Amen. Submission Amen. to God. Amen. Submission to God and obedience to His Word. Amen. That's the secret. Obedience yes. to God's Word. No matter what. Yeah. Hallelujah. No matter what. Amen. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I hope that you learned something, brothers and sisters. Amen. Hallelujah. Godliness with contentment. It's great gain. I, 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 alam mo, meron akong pinayuhang kapatid. No, uh, sabi ko sa kanya, ang negosyo, hindi yan dapat mag-control sa'yo. Pag kinokontrol ka na ng negosyo mo, yan na yung magiging idol mo. Ha? Kaya ka nagninegosyo para i-provide niyan yung pangangailangan mo. Hindi yan ang buhay mo. Ha? Hindi, hindi mong buhay ang, ang negosyo mo. Hindi yan ang life mo. Ang negosyo mo, kaya mo ginagawa yan so it can provide your needs, can pay your bills, can send your kids to school, you know, you can live a decent life. But that should not be the one to control you and motivate you. Kasi ang nangyari ngayon, yung misan yung iba, yung trabaho nila ang nagkocontrol sa kanila, and, you know, the things around them, that's their life. But isn't it, that's not supposed to be, the, the, you know, the case. You know, things should not control us. We should be the one to control it. You get my point? Hallelujah. We're not supposed to be Uh, controlled by things, but mm -hmm. let things be under our control. Mm -hmm. Okay? This mm -hmm. should be, they, they, they can only be one that should control us, and that's God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that is how to live a life of peace and joy mm -hmm. and worry free mm -hmm. lifestyle. Yes. Knowing mm -hmm. that my life is lived in accordance with the will of the Almighty God. Amen. 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 Hello, Pastor. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, Pastor. James. Hello, Pastor. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. Baby James. Baby James. Are you know that this is Pastor? Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Over there. Hello. 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 Baby James. Baby boy. It's a baby boy. James Earl. Baby boy. Santiago. James. Santiago. James. Okay. Good night. 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 Anong oras po dyan? Alas 7, alas 8. It's Christine. Bye-bye.